Hello everyone and welcome back to Eat Sleep Brief. And this week we're gonna be covering water chemistry. It's a topic that gets asked quite a bit, not only from newer reefers, but just from reefers sometimes even going through issues. A lot of times we'll question what parameters, or if the parameters we're running are something our corals should be thriving in. The four parameters that are gonna be covered today are gonna to be alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, and salinity. On these four values, what I'm gonna be covering today is my personal experience, also my experience you know, asking people and seeing what other successful reefers run. I don't, and I wouldn't call it the only, uh, let's say I throw a number out like for alkalinity, whatever number I give out, it's just what I've had good experience with, it's what I've heard other successful reefers have great experience with. Uh, don't take it as, you know, if you run anything outside of those values, you're gonna not have a successful reef tank. So the first parameter we will be covering is gonna be alkalinity. And I think the reason for that, it's one of the most important ones, you know, one of the ones that will affect your corals more than anything. And, you know, a swing either positive, a swing negative, will surely have, in most cases, a negative effect, whether on soft corals, hard corals, SPS, LPS, anything of that sort, alkalinity is something that none of those corals like for it to swing. So when it comes to frequency of testing alkalinity, I highly recommend, if you don't have a lot of corals, you can get away with sometimes not even testing it. Of course, I know a lot of people will recommend that, but as long as you're not dosing anything and just allowing your water changes to maintain your alkalinity, you should be fine, uh, sometimes going two to three weeks without testing it. Now, if you have a tank that has a lot more loaded with corals, you know, softies, anything really, because any type of coral will consume the alkalinity that's out in the water. Once you do start adding those, it's a good rule of thumb to test at least once a week. I'm not gonna lie, when I had my JBJ and I had it dialed in, I would test maybe once a month to maybe two times a month once again, once I really had it dialed in. When you get new corals or anytime you're adding corals, you may have to test it because of course, when the coral's growing, it's consuming more. And when you add more corals, they're also consuming more. I'm able to test my alkalinity on a daily basis and you guys can see it right here. I'm gonna open my GHL app. Hopefully it's able to focus. There we go. GHL, it's opening. We should be around eight to 8.5. That's generally where I like to keep my, let's see. Oh, there we go. Sure enough, we're at 8.2. Uh, and again, this, this KHD test my alkalinity every single day. I mean, it could, it could test as many times as I want in a day. But for me, it's very simple to test alkalinity. It's with the press of a button in my scenario. It's scheduled to do it every day at five, uh, at five o'clock. Some of the other options you may have for testing your alkalinity is a HANA checker. HANA Instruments makes a variety of test kits, not only for alkalinity, but this is kind of what all their test kits look like. I've previously, before I had the KHT, I would always use the HANA. And the reason for it, there's Solifer, Red Sea, a lot of other companies that make it. This one was by far the easiest, not only that, it takes a lot of the human error and the guesswork out of matching colors out of it. But of course, now with the KHD, it makes it a lot easier. I don't even need to take this out or mess with this. I just simply hit a button on my phone and it tells me the exact level on my tank. So I know a lot of you guys are asking yourself for alkalinity, what levels do I run? Well, again, just like I mentioned earlier, I tend to run anywhere from eight to 8.5. I mean, I'll go as low as, as nine, uh, anywhere from eight to nine. I've heard reefers also run 11, as high as 12 with great success. I've heard people run it as low as six with great success. But I think the biggest rule of thumb you guys can take from alkalinity is absolutely never shoot for a number. Let me give you a prime example. If you're one day dosing your reef tank, and let's say you're doing it with the doser, right? And let's say you're hovering at 8.2, okay? You're, you've been solid at 8.2. Don't get too crazy about making it 8.5 or 8.6 or 8.7. If you're shooting for about 8.5, 8.2 is perfectly normal. I would much rather you leave it there then you change a number because every time you make a change in your reef tank, whether we like it or not, our corals will stress out to a certain level, maybe not stress out, but it's gonna take them time to acclimate to a new alkalinity in this case. So I highly recommend if you're shooting for, let's say an 8.5 and you're 8.1, 8.2, leave it there. You know, if you're a little bit higher, don't worry about it. 
So don't shoot for a number. I think that's the biggest advice I can give you guys when it comes to alkalinity. For you guys that do have maybe too low of alkalinity, what can you do to raise it? Water changes. Water changes is by far the easiest way to do it. Um, also to lower them. If you wanna lower them and you, the salt mix you're using is lower than whatever value you're trying to lower, technically that should lower it. The other way is physically just adding alkalinity to the tank. So in other words, two part. That can be done very simple, but I highly recommend you pay attention to the directions on whatever type of two part you're using because there's tons of them out there and they're all different potency. Whatever the company recommends, I would do about half of that just to be safe. And that's generally a good way to raise it and again, to lower it. The only way I'm aware of to really lower alkalinity is gonna be doing a water change. So the next parameter, and I would call this one probably the second most important, although you know it's arguable, uh, I would call it calcium. So calcium is a very important uh, element in the reef tank, a very important part of the chemistry balance in the reef tank. And one that, generally speaking, you can get away without testing it, uh, sometimes even once a month. It's one that isn't consumed as high ratios as alkalinity, which is why you can easily get away with not testing as often. So when it comes to calcium, uh, the best way and what I would recommend to test it uh, now for this one, I still go ahead and use my HANA checker, although there is other checkers, not checkers, there is other test kits out there. I know Salifert, uh, Red Sea makes them, but again, the whole reason I use the HANA is just because it's a lot easier to perform the test. So this guy's pretty much the same concept as the alkalinity. It kind of looks the same other than another color and obviously testing a different element. Uh, very few steps, I think there's about two steps, uh, two or three steps to do on this one. Not very difficult and it's very accurate. I mean, I'd be lying if I didn't tell you guys and we're honest with you, to be totally honest, I've yet to do a tank of calcium on this reef tank. Is that a bad thing? You know, obviously it's something you would want to test for, but again, I typically, even the JBJ, I didn't test it as often. Now I know you guys are probably asking, what are the optimum levels for calcium? Calcium, much like alkalinity, I've seen people have successes anywhere from 350 up to 600. Now I know a lot of you guys may be flipping out at the 600, but I've seen a lot of guys with beautiful SPS tanks that are just thriving at that level. Now, generally speaking, personally, I like to maintain mine anywhere from four to 450. Uh, but again, I've seen them go as low as about three to 350 and as high as about 550 to 600. But ideally speaking, you know, four, 450 should be a very good range to be at. Now with alkalinity, this is one that I'll be dead honest with you. Corals don't react as negatively as they do to alkalinity. It's one that can have a few swings without seeing much of your corals going to distress or get stressed out. But of course, just like alkalinity, it's not something we want it to be fluctuating. So just like the prime example I'll give you with alkalinity, I highly recommend if you guys are shooting for a specific number and you're kind of in that range, I wouldn't worry about it. Just leave it there and don't worry about it because your cores are going to be a lot happier being stable than you trying to fluctuate the numbers and get it exactly where you want them to be. Now, one of the three less important ones, and again, it, it is important, but again, it's not, doesn't affect the corals as much. Of course, there is scenarios where it will, is magnesium. Magnesium is one that I think on the JBJ, if I'm completely honest with you guys, I maybe tested that once every two months. So it's something that wasn't done very often. If you are doing water changes, you can honestly, in a lot of cases, get away with never testing it because a lot of the uh, modern salt, especially if it's a good salt, it has a good elevated uh, level of magnesium. And magnesium, I would surely say, out of the three elements is one that gets consumed at an even lower ratio than calcium. Although there is variations to this and that obviously can vary a little bit, but surely I would say alkalinity is consumed a lot quicker than calcium and calcium is consumed a lot quicker than magnesium. Now, you guys may be watching this video and say, well, according to what you just spoke about, I should only really monitor alkalinity, right? Well, in a, nut, you know, in a nutshell, hopefully it was that easy, I would say yes, but the fact of the matter is that all three of these parameters must be in a well-balanced ratio. Let me give you guys an example. Let's say I had my alkalinity at in between eight and nine, my calcium between four and 450, and my magnesium super, super low. What would actually happen is, it's very interesting chemistry wise, and I haven't gone too much in detail myself to research it, 
but from what I've read is the alkalinity and calcium and actually the magnesium will start getting consumed in ridiculous ratios and the corals will not be happy. So this is why it's very important that even though magnesium and calcium may not be as important, but they all must be in balance with each other. Now, when it comes to magnesium, I like to maintain my levels about 1400 to 1500 um, in that range. Again, on this tank, just like calcium, I've never tested it. And when it comes to the test kit I use, when I do use it, um, it'd be this bad boy here by uh, Red Sea. I believe, and I mean, I'll be honest with you, the main reason I don't like doing it, there's about like six, seven steps you gotta do. And that's the main reason I almost never test for uh, magnesium, not only in this tank, but even in, in the JBJ, it's just so difficult. Now, I do know Salifert, um, for you guys that, that want easier test kits, I know Salifert for a fact does do a lot less steps and a lot of people have told me it's easier to read. So if you guys are wondering any other test kits that I'd probably recommend, although I've never used them, but I've heard Salifert is a very good test kit. So one of the last ones here of our top four is gonna be salinity. So salinity is pretty much knowing exactly how salty your water is, if you will. And this is one that not only affects your corals, but it's also gonna infect your fish in the tank. There are certain parameters that fish will handle. There's certain parameters also corals will handle. And generally speaking, fish will handle a lot lower salinity than our corals will. When it comes to fish, I've heard guys run them as low as 0 0.16, 0.18, super, super low. Um, and I've heard the fish handle it as high as close to or sorry, zero or sorry, 0 0.030, which is ridiculously high. I don't recommend you running that, but I have heard guys that accidentally have run that. They didn't calibrate their refractometers and little did they know they're running a super high salinity. Now, when it comes to corals, corals have a very fine line that they'll accept uh, as far as alkalinity is concerned. And that generally is uh, 0.023 is probably the lowest I'd really want to push it. And the highest is point, uh, 0.029. And again, those are extreme ranges for corals. What I personally run and what I would recommend is 0.025 to 0.027. On this tank, I'm actually running a 0.027. The reason I do that, the KHD actually takes sample water from the tank. So over time, it's actually slowly dropping the, uh, the salinity because obviously the auto top off is gonna try and compensate. So that's the reason I buffer it just the hair, but I probably wouldn't wanna run it any higher than that. When it comes to testing your salinity, there's a few uh, refractometers, hydrometers out there. It really depends on what your budget is. Personally, what I would recommend is uh, this one here by Hannah Checker. It's a super easy digital. I'm sure you guys have, have seen it, not only in, in my videos, but in other people's videos all over Instagram as well. But this one gives you a pretty straightforward digital readout. You insert it into the water and it'll straight up just tell you exactly what the um, what the value is of the salinity and it's very straightforward. So you guys may be asking yourself, how am I able to adjust salinity? Well, it really depends what you're trying to do. If you're trying to lower the salinity, what I would recommend is to just take out salt water and have your auto top off replenish and that'll obviously take care of your salinity. Now, when it comes to raising it, <clears throat> raising it, a lot of people would try and think that, oh, let me just add salt to the tank, but that's something you absolutely never want to do. You never want to add salt wherever there's livestock such as corals and fish. The best way to raise your salinity is next time you do a water change, just mix a little bit higher, like 0 0.029, 0 0.028, so over time you can slowly raise it. Another good way of doing it is instead of having your auto top off replenish fresh water, have it replenish salt water but again, that's something you wanna to monitor to uh, kind of keep an eye on. Now, I didn't mention how to lower or raise calcium and magnesium, so I'll cover that here real quick. When it comes to lowering calcium, this one generally you would want to do a water change, but obviously making sure whatever water you're using, your salt mix is lower than whatever values in the tank or else it's not gonna work. When it comes to raising it, very simple, just dose it into the tank via two-part. Now magnesium, same exact concept. If you wanna lower it, just do a water change, make sure your salt mix is a lower level and you should be fine. And of course, raising it, again, a standard two-part of magnesium, you can raise it to, uh, to the level you want. Now one last thing to cover on salinity. Salinity is one that's very much like alkalinity. 
it's one that believe it or not will affect your corals more than anything drastically especially if you have anemones i've heard a lot of people saying they have nems and they're like dude i did a water change all of a sudden it's super pissed off and i'm like what did you mix that well i mixed that this is that what you normally run it at and they tell me no that is one thing that corals will get really pissed off is uh, salinity so when you are doing that you know try and keep all your salt mixes within range more importantly get yourself a, a tester that you can accurately and reliably mix your salt and really never be, be worried about it so guys I think we're gonna wrap this video up here. Um, hopefully I, I didn't confuse you guys too much. Hopefully you guys got some useful information. I plan on doing another of these videos when it comes to nutrients, so such as nitrates and phosphates. Let me know if you guys uh, would like to see one of those down in the comments. Uh, but also let me, down, let me know down in the comments what you guys run your tanks at. Uh, I'd love to hear what you run your alkalinity, your calcium, magnesium, and your salinity. And what are your thoughts? What do you think is one that you sh you kind of tend to monitor the most and more importantly which one do you believe is the one that most affects your corals because uh, at the end of the day you know that's really what we're all after is really having colorful and thriving corals in our reef so i'd love to hear down in the comment box below guys love to hear your comments i always do read through them i think that's going to be pretty much it i really hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys have any questions comments or concerns please leave them down in the comment box below I thank you, each and every one of you very much for watching. As always, happy reefing.